for a very long time now would realize that a lot of um, unemployed nurses have been picketing and complaining about non-payment of allowances, about postings, not getting jobs and all of that. And so we decided to invite some of them, especially the reps of, uh, or the executive members of the Graduates of Unemployed Nurses and also the Coalition of Unemployed Nurses Association into the studios to really uh, tell us what exactly the problem is. And we took it on social media to find out from other nurses as well what really they are going through. Now, Tender says that uh, transfer to the hinterland without provision of accommodation. This is not only about nurses. Teachers are the largest sufferers of this. But what is usually expected is you arrange with your immediate supervisor and community folks to get a room for you as you come. What else? That's not the best, but that's what most workers go through. Now, Nikia says 2017 batch of nurses are home and they haven't been cleared to be posted. But this government keeps saying they have posted nurses till 2018 batch, which is a great lie. Okay. Uh, Dicta, Ekia says, says that we still have this huge number of nurses and midwives at home. Their skills are dying off. Please post them. The 2016 promises the current government's voiced out has not been fulfilled. Rashida says that, what about teachers? A teacher is posted to a hinterland without provision of accommodation, but we survive. So they should try and cope. Beauty Bell says that we are on the fourth day of clinicals and life has not been easy for us. Getting money for our transportation and feeding to our various facilities has been a headache. Since we trainees are not working and also due to financial constraints, our parents and guardians are facing um, difficulties. We will be very grateful to you and your team, TV3 New Day, if you can help amplify and channel our grievances to the authorities. I'm Abafre Belinda, student of College of Health and Wellbeing, Kintampo. Thank you very much. Uh, Unix says that, hello, Bella. Government promised immediate postings of 2017 batch of nurses because we never got allowances during training, but up till date, we're still home unemployed. Please help us because our skills are dying off, which at the end of the day will cause more harm to the good people of Ghana. Say John says, of course, we have lots of grievances. The kind of ill treatment that these politicians are giving to nurses is alarming. You can imagine someone undergoing a two-year program, sitting home for two years unemployed before gaining an employment. What will be the nature of their skills acquired? Drastically deteriorated. The work is practical. Hence, we need constant practice. Mr. President, this is not what you promised us. Okay. And a crab McLean Erickson says 2017 batch of nurses and midwives are still sitting home since uh, their completion of the national service in April 2018. This batch of nurses and, and midwives were the ones this government used as the election tool by promising them immediate employment when they complete. Um, and out of that, they, they weren't given any allowance post 2017 batch of nurses and midwives now the 2018 batch of nurses and midwives currently doing their national services have also not received a dime for having worked for 10 months most have been posted out of their districts and they are renting feeding and sometimes transport themselves to workplaces yet this government is heartless callous and insensitive towards these nurses and midwives are we the final two and then i'll speak to my executives in the studio unique hannah says that bella nurses pay for their own hospital bills even in the hospital they render care to the sick what even puts me off is nursing as a noble profession we don't have a licensed uniform and that makes it easy for anybody at all to get the uniform this, these two issues are of great concern to me and I'm going to fight for it no matter how long it takes and Jeffrey Kovna says trained teachers also suffer same issues we'll give teachers the opportunity to also speak at a point and so please bear with us God bless you Bella for bringing this issue up just let the whole country know that even with paying nurses allowances there's NDC NPP, Tain and Tescon. This country is sick to the stomach and that's Prosper Van Kroos Akula. And Dan Will says government should walk their talk by posting the 2017 batch of nurses and midwives in the first quarter of 2020 as promised. If not, it will be scary. And finally, uh, the plight of being posted to a CHPS compound in the rural area without any allowances is something else. Poor road network, understaffing and inadequate incentives to promote work is another story. Now, transfers aren't easier these days, and that is from Precious Pell. Now, I remember on the 31st, well, 21st of October 2019, we had members of the Graduates of Unemployed Nurses and Midwives Association picketing at the Ministry of Health, and they were demanding uh, clearance, financial clearance to be posted as well. And in the studios, I have with me Achiri Abraham. He's the General Secretary of Graduates Unemployed Nurses and Midwives. That would be you. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining me. Good morning. And Combat Isaiah Limakip. 
All right, he's the national organizer for the Graduate Unemployed Nurses and Midwives Association. Thank you so much for joining me. And Abubakar Issa Kabori is the president of the Coalition of Rotation Nurses and Midwives. It's good to have you all in the studios. And we realized it was necessary to have this conversation, especially because a new year has started. And unfortunately, your grievances have not been addressed. So first of all, I'll start with you. What exactly is the problem? Okay. Um, thank you very much and uh, good morning to our cherished viewers. Uh, Graduate Unemployed Nurses and Midwives Association is a gr group of public trained nurses and midwives who completed their training in the year 2017 and 2018. Uh, we are made up of about 42,000 graduate unemployed nurses currently seated at home as far as the public sector is concerned. Mm -hmm. And I would like to break it down. We have the 2017 August batch. We are up to about 9,800. We have the February 2018 batch. Those who couldn't make it in August, they are also about 1,500. We have the 2017 certificate batch. That is the two years program. They also are about 16,000 in number. Then finally, we have the 2018 certificate batch. They are also about 14,000. So that means we have about 42,000 nurses at home currently. Mm. Then to place on records, the 2017 batch of nurses and midwives in the history of Ghana, they are the only batch that did not enjoy or benefit from the training allowance that we usually uh, enjoy back at campus. And proud to the 2016 general elections, we were promised by His Excellency uh, Nana Adudankwa Akufuado of restoring the trainee allowance within the first 100 days. Mm. So the group of nurses that are currently at home, we are those nurses who drank the Nanal Kalipo mm. during or prior to the 2016 general elections with the hope that we will enjoy the training allowance. But this did not see the light of the day. Then okay. in August 2017, we had a meeting with His Excellency the President of which the Honorable Minister of Health, Dr. Kweku Ajima Menu, mm. was also there. Okay. And uh, it was all about denying continuing students training allowance. So they made it clear to us that we are almost completing. So mm. in place of this, they are going to what? Employ us immediately. That okay. was in 2017. Because they couldn't pay you their allowance. Because they couldn't pay us the allowance. Mm -hmm. So uh, right after completion, we were having the hope that we are going to be employed immediately of which the president stated during the State of the Nation address in 2019 that the Ministry of Health is doing all it can to what engage or get financial clearance for the 2017 and the 2018 batch of nurses. And we are currently in 2020. And we still... are still seated at home. Wow. And you've been trying to address this issue over and over again, but nothing has been. Let me bring your other executive in. He's Combat Isaiah. Yeah. Um, how many times have you tried addressing this issue prior to the president, um, you know, making this claim during his 2019 um, uh, address? Well, we've tried a lot mm. and uh, countless. Okay. Which they've not listened to us. As and that's why you decided to go to the Ministry of Health to pick it? Yes, So please. before that, how many times had you addressed? Had you written letters to the Ministry of Health? How many times? What was the response? Oh, yeah. We wrote a lot of letters to them. Okay. Many. And then when we write it and we say we are to meet with them, they will tell us that, oh, we should meet with the HR. And okay. And then we'll meet with the HR too. The end results, we even get it. So we you ask, actually we met the, the, HR for, of the Ministry I of mean, Health. the timeline for our clearance. Mm -hmm. But they say they will make it known to us, which we are not happy about it. They didn't even give you a timeline as to when they will sort out the yeah. clearance. Yes. To add up to what uh, my honorable member said, mm. uh, we wrote uh, on three occasions to the, minist uh, the Ministry of Health, and we were called to have a meeting on the 19th of June, 2019. Okay. That was our first meeting with the Director HR, Dr. Kwesi Asabri, at the Ministry of Health. On the 27th of September, we had another response to a letter we wrote to the Ministry, mm. of which the Minister couldn't uh, uh, have a meeting with us, and he still directed us to the Director HR at the Ministry of Health. Then finally, on the uh, 28th of November, mm. we had another meeting with the Ministry of Health and the same HR unit. And it has still, been the usual reassurance. Okay. And uh, leadership during that meeting requested for a timeline as to when 
we are going to get our financial clearance. And but all this proved futile. We have also engaged the NMC. Mm -hmm. That was on the 18th of December. Okay. We had a meeting with the uh, uh, midwifery, nursing and midwifery council. council. We have also written to our mother association, that is the Ghana Registered Nurses and Midwives Association. And what was their response? And they never responded to our letter. When did you write this letter? We wrote this letter on the 3rd of May, 2019. Okay. This very day, we also sent a letter to the Ghana Health Service, of which we never had a response from them. Did you follow up? We made a follow-up to the Ghana Health Service. Myself and the national president, we made a follow-up to the Ghana Health Service uh, Secretariat mm -hmm. in Accra mm -hmm. here and they never responded to us. Okay, let me bring in Abu Bakar Issa. He's the president's coalition of rotation nurses and midwives. Your issue is different. You mentioned that you've been um, doing your service for or rotation for 10 months now. And what, what has been the problem? Okay. Good morning once again. Good morning to your cherished viewers. Mm. Well, coalition of rotation nurses and midwives is an association made up of public trained rotation nurses and midwives mm -hmm. across the country. We've been posted uh, since April, and then we April started 2019. April 2019, okay. where we started our rotation. Mm -hmm. Then from there, um, we started going to the ministry, making full ups concerning our allowances. Mm -hmm. In fact, for now, we can confidently say that, fine, most of us have gone through the biometric. Have you then, gone through it? Yes, I've gone you through have? it, okay. yes. And as I'm speaking right now, about 2,248 people are going through their biometric registration, okay. awaiting payment. But what it's it's uh, what stands now is that um, we were placed on a wrong grade, which we wrote a letter to the ministry that according to the 2019 single span salary structure, mm -hmm. we were supposed to be placed on 12L, and we made the HR of the ministry aware that we are not giving up on that until they give us a concrete. Um, a explain it to viewers better because if you say placed on 12L, someone yeah. would ask, what it's, does it, that even mean? Yes, it's it's a public document according to the single span salary structure. Mm -hmm. It means that. Uh, when, when you are being mechanized, it depends on the grade that you are placed on, that you've been paid. Okay. You understand? Yes. We were placed on H, H1, but on the single spine salary structure document, it's captured on it bodily, health intense. Okay. 12L. Oh, we okay. We went to the ministry, we gave them these documents. They told us that it's not an authentic document. We said, fine, if it's not, then give us uh, a, a document that proves that what we are having is not the right document. Mm -hmm. And we made the HR aware that even though we are going through our biometric registration, we will come back and we'll surely have to, they surely have to address this issue for us okay. because we don't understand why we have a document and you are telling us that that is not That the means right you are document. being paid less than, less you, than should what receive. you should receive. And how long has this been? Since you got posted? Since we got posted, yes. And even that your allowance hasn't come? Okay. So, uh, about, let's say, half of our number, we're about eight, uh, uh, 8,062. Okay. And then half of our number have been... God have been They've receiving received. the allowances. But they have but received then, the step lower, not exactly, the right amount. Exactly, exactly. So even exactly. if everybody should receive the amounts, that means that they are paying you less. So less. there still has there has to be a balance exactly, that needs to be given exactly. to you. Yeah. And you addressed it? We addressed it. In fact, uh, our mother association, that is GRMA, has promi promised that it will, he, will, he will take up this issue. When? But as it stands now, he wrote they wrote a, a press release that was, uh, I think, on uh, last two months, that last year, yes, yes that they will take up. The, 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 issue. the issue and okay. they address it. But as it stands now, we've not had anything from them and we are hoping that at least they will surely do something about it. Let me come to Abraham and Isaiah. What has life been like being unemployed for what, two years? Almost three years now. Yeah. What has life been like for you and for your members? Okay, um, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, uh, we see unemployment in Ghana here, especially when it has to do with nurses and midwives as a security threat to the nation. Why do you say so? Why am I saying so? Um, nursing is a profession. We undergo training. Mm -hmm. And right after completion, it's just like training a military man or a policeman. After six months of training, he is engaged. Mm -hmm. He's not seated at home. Likewise, if you are trained as a nurse and a midwife, because it's a practical-based profession, you are supposed to be within the health facility and practice. Yeah. As we are seated home, I'm supposed to be in the ward serving Mother Ghana. And it's kind of a practical-based profession, and it needs consistency. Mm -hmm. When you are within the ward setting, experience counts a lot. Yeah. Experience counts a lot. But right now, we are seated at home. Others are engaging in non-health professions. Some are helping their mothers in the market. Uh, and I want to place on record 
since we did not enjoy the trainee allowance, some of our parents had to borrow monies and pay our school fees mm -hmm. with the hope that when we are done with our training, we are going to be engaged by government, then we work and pay for the debts incurred by our parents. Yeah. But as I speak today, we have the, cer the certificate batch currently at home for almost three years now because they are not doing the national service. Mm. So right from 2017 November, they have been at home. Wow. 2017 No November, national service. No national service. That is for the certificate program. Mm -hmm. We have the certificate program, then we will have the diploma program. Okay. So with the diploma program, right after completion, we undertake our mandatory one-year uh, service. That is rotation. All right. In other words. So... We are done with our rotation. We are also seated at home. We have no option than to be writing letters day in, day out. And we know how the system is now. But aside writing letters, have you not tried to at least get a private job in the meantime? How difficult is that? Yeah. <laughs> Isaiah. Okay. When it comes to the, uh, I mean, the issue of private job, mm -hmm. uh, most of the private hospitals have applied. Okay. But most of them employ, I mean, they are relative and then friends. How do you know well. that? I mean, you can't, you can't just say that the employer, do you have any facts to back oh, yeah. this claim? I've seen it clearly because okay. I, I apply in one particular hospital, which they, they asked me to wait. Why did they, did you ask them why they asked you to wait? Oh yeah, they said, oh, in case there's a vacancy, then they will let me come and fix in. So it's not about maybe um, your experience, number of years that you've worked or anything. They didn't no. explain that to you? And then after, listen, my junior computer school, he mm -hmm. came and then they've employed him as well. And he was a, a family member to that person. Okay, yeah. so you feel that's the reason why yeah. that and person got the job over to you? To add more, most of the private hospitals, too, they, em they employ, I mean, ladies. Let me put it that way. Because most of we, the males, we are not getting that opportunity. Why are you not getting the opportunity? Well, with this one, I can't explain it further. Is, it, is that I, true? Because this, I, this is also one challenge quite a claim the, that I don't seem to understand. One challenge with the private facility I have observed is actually <laughs> with the intake. Mm -hmm. If you look at the private hospitals, uh, they do not employ uh, a, a greater number of nurses and midwives. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the Ghana Health Service, that is the government hospitals, you realize that there are many across yeah. board. Yeah. So one problem I have identified with the private facilities are that they do not take majority of nurses and midwives. So it has to do with the intake. Okay. You see, okay. that is why most of us are not getting mm. the jobs. And when you apply to a private facility and you are not given the opportunity, you have no option than to look for another place. And when okay. you keep trying and you are not getting, probably you might find yourself into something different, which is not health related. Are you, are you not being a little impatient? And I'm just playing the devil's advocate, especially because, I mean, we do understand that there's the limit to how many nurses can be employed at a point. And so um, if government exhausts that limit, then maybe it will take a while for them to be able to figure out what to do with the next, especially because we're having issues with um, facilities. Our hospitals are not well equipped, and so they are going to employ you to go there, but there's really not much for you to do in there. And maybe they are trying to resolve those issues, and that's why they're asking you to hold on. You don't think that could be a reason why you should be patient? Well, let's say, for instance, our badge from latest by March, we'll finish our rotation. Mm -hmm. Now we have 2018 badge, about 42,000 being seated at home. Yeah. Hopefully, when we finish, we are going to add up. We are, we are equally the same number as 42. If not more, maybe a little bit less than that number, then we're also going to add up the same number. So even when we had a meeting with uh, the HR at the Ministry of Health, mm -hmm. he told us point blank that this year they are going to employ 2017-2018 nurses. He said it. He said it. When, when would they employ them? Did he say when? He, he didn't give us timeline. Okay. He just said they were going to employ us. So that there's hope. What, that, that's what he told us. So mm. what we are saying is that if they don't employ us, that means that we are going to add up to 2017. Mm -hmm. And that if it's anything that is going to come up, it's going to be something massive. You understand? So, yeah. so after everything that you've done, what's next? You have picketed at the Ministry of Health. You're saying there's been no response. You've written letters, still no response. What's next? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I want to say something about what, what my good said. brother okay. said. Uh, if you look at the nurse to patient ratio currently in Ghana, it's 1 is to 18. Mm -hmm. But according to the World Health Organization, the ratio is supposed to be 1 is to 5. Okay. Then, uh, it's also not about being impatient. But currently, some of our government officials, it's like they are not giving out one message. 
with regards to the employment of nurses and midwives. Mm -hmm. And I will speak in reference to what the Honorable Minister of Information said. He made a submission on point blank. That was on the 9th of January. What did he say? He said uh, the government employed about 40,000 nurses and they are left with about 10,000 nurses mm -hmm. to be employed, of which they are having some financial constraints. We also uh, had an encounter with the Deputy Minister of Health when we had police problems at the, minist uh, at the Ministry of Health. Mm -hmm. And he is also saying they have employed about 54,000 nurses. So now, who is lying to us? You get it. Okay. So, with regards to the 2017 batch, we have been home for three years now. We have tried engaging the ministry and we are not given a timeline. Mm -hmm. Our skills are decaying. We are languishing at home and we were having the hope that we would have been employed by now. Okay. So with the 42,000 nurses currently at home, my brother here is currently undertaking his national service. And when he's done, they will add up to the number. Mm -hmm. So that means, Ghana, we still need nurses. Okay. With regards to the ratio that we are having here, 1 is to 18, mm -hmm. of which the World Health Organization is 1 is to 5. Yeah, that's a problem. Anyway, so Jennifer Ebasso on Facebook says, Good morning, Bella. Please help us echo to the public and the current government that the 2017-2018 batch of nurses have not been posted to their stations. The, uh, the painful aspect is when you write to some private hospitals for un unemployment and they reply by saying they can't pay you, hence no employment or whatsoever. Have you also experienced this issue of not being able to pay you, reason why they have not employed you in any private institution? Yeah, some are suffering from that problem because as I said, with the private facilities, you write uh, or apply to some of these hospitals and the amount they, they, they pay to our yeah. nurses and midwives actually is not uh, encouraging mm -hmm. enough. All right. Efia yeah. says that why do nurses always have to demonstrate before getting employed? Why train a huge number of them and deny them of postings? This is a professional training um, and our skills are going waste. Our skills are wasting at home. This is Gideon Lodson. Jay Milani says, good morning. It's sad to know that nurses and midwives who completed training in 2017 are still home without financial clearance. Meanwhile, the nurse to patient ratio in our hospital is nothing to write home about. Your president just spoke about it. All they say there is, is that there's no money, yet new developments like the new EC register come and there's no money suddenly for that uh, well they come and there's suddenly money for that God save our motherland Ghana great move thanks for your efforts great work TV3 thank you so much as many Beatrice well Bennis and Laffy Daniel and uh, J John Chinemi says that the NMC and GRNMA should also come out with a total number of unemployed nurses and midwives because the government has been lying to the public for so long and also the nurses allowances please hit hard on the government to keep his promise Nanaba Joe Frimpong Ayam also says the government should help them please we're going to try and get in touch with the rights officials to address this issue uh, do we have anybody on the line Unfortunately, we're not getting through to them, and so we're going to try and do our best to get in touch with them and see what can be done. But in the meantime, these are some of the challenges that they have put uh, to bear. And so if you're also a nurse, well, we're keeping our fingers crossed, hoping, based on the promise made, that this year they are going to employ. So we're, we're hoping, right, that uh, things I will get better? I think we've not had any uh, document backing uh, yeah. what they yeah. said. You and need that a is document. what we are, yeah. we are finding a problem with. So because if you, if you are telling us you employ us, we were pleading with the ministry that then kindly tell us the timeline or mm -hmm. probably provide us with what? Mm -hmm. A document that is backing your claim. But we've not had anything as Nothing such. Nothing at all. We've also had several promises from the president, as I said, not just anyone, but His Excellency the President. He is our father and we know he's a listening president. The promise he made to us prior to 2016 general elections, of which we never enjoyed the trainee allowance, and he promised us of immediate employment. We are pleading with him mm -hmm. to uh, try and speak with the Honorable Minister of Health to get us our financial What payment. timelines are you giving them? Are you giving any timelines? Okay, actually, mm -hmm. as a group, uh, we started from somewhere. Mm -hmm. we, we are having our stakeholder engagement. Then we also had a press conference of which we gave government a 21 working day ultimatum, they never responded to us. Nothing at all. Yeah, we still wrote to the Ministry of Health to have an engagement with them. And uh, we had a picketing done in October. Yeah. So currently, uh, we are also planning to demonstrate. That is on the 28th Is that the best way to go? Well, I would say it's the best way to go. Why do you say so? Because looking at, I mean, the politicians, they try to play smart game with 
uh, with the issue of employment of nurses and midwives. Mm. So the only thing they can hear us is to demonstrate. And you think demonstration would help? You picketed at the Ministry of Health and you d it didn't yield much result. And so if you're demonstrating, that's just going to... I mean, look at what happened to the law students um, sometime in 2019 as well. Uh, it was very chaotic. So that's what I'm asking. That Do you think demonstration is the best way to go at this point? Well, dialoguing sometimes... You dialogue to some extent and then you feel like it's not working, you understand? Mm. So you need to let the government understand what, what, what he's doing is not the right thing, you understand? So the, the language that the government understands is just to, for you to demonstrate. Yeah. Okay. That is the best way to go. So all when right. it's demonstration, we all go out and then we demonstrate and then the government will surely listen to us. Okay, and no problem. You wanted to say something? Yeah, as okay. you can see me wearing my uniform, you can see that it has tightened me. And then that means you are they, going, you are yeah, going big old. They, so even though you are unemployed, that, you are fine. Uh, it's tired of lying down. So that's what least. the uniform is saying. Yeah. It's rather saying you are living a good life oh, because no, even no. though you are you are unemployed, you are <laughs> still getting good food to eat, which is great, uh, is it not? Oh no, yeah. We are not. <laughs> we also want anyway. to uh, plead with our mother association. Uh, we have a new crop of leaders under the able leadership of Mrs. Perpetua, and I will plead that as a new president elect of GRNME. She should try her possible best and step in. Mm. The shouldn't just relax at their secretariat. Meanwhile, their junior colleagues are at, at home. And we are suffering from nothing but skills decay. Mm. It's not the best. So All we right. are still pleading with our mother association to also try their best and step into this matter. Thank no you problem. To add up a little. Yeah. I mean, we, we have suffered a lot. I mean, the 10 months that we worked, our colleagues who wrote their line system exam in February have also started their rotation. It started in October. Have they so, been paid? Not yet. So we are pleading with the government that what we went through, they shouldn't go through the same. So we are pleading with them to also seek financial clearance for them so that at least they will start paying them Certainly. earlier than we were paid. Okay. Then, uh, well, oh, but you, you said you are fine mm -hmm. because your body no, has no. come off. Okay, <laughs> final submission, to, then we can uh, go. My message to Ghanaians and then our politicians is that we nurses were trained to work, not to sit in the house. Mm -hmm. So they should try to give us our financial clearance. The way we, we drank Calipo with uh, Akufado in 2016, the same way we we'll do it in 2020 if they deny us of our financial clearance. You, what would you do exactly? Oh, yeah. We also drink Calipo with JM. <laughs> you are threatening that you'd vote for the other party if they don't employ you. Yeah. So are you saying that if they employ you, then you're going to go ahead and vote for the government in power? Of course. So it's not really about who is doing better. Oh, no. Um, we also assess them uh, based on how... But if they don't employ you, then you vote for Yeah, I'll vote GM. against I particular. And what, what if baby GM also comes to power and it's still the same situation? Then what happens? We'll continue to, I mean, worry them. I see. Okay. <laughs> anyway, I've been speaking to Atri Abraham, General Secretary for Graduates of Unemployed Nurses and Midwives. Combat Azaya Limakibe is the national organizer uh, for the same group. And Abubakar Isa Kabori is the President of Coalition of <coughs> Rotation Nurses and Midwives. Rick Palm quickly says that with the unemployed nurses, their case is complex. So how can government be forced to employ you when you were not bonded and still received allowances whilst in school? Well, they said they didn't receive allowances even in school. And that's why a promise was made to them to get them employed immediately after completion of the course. And the, the 2017 badge, hold on, uh, that didn't enjoy training allowance. We're still not bonded. The certificate nurses put the fala. You want to talk about the bonding? Yeah, with the bonding, I quite remember in May 2018 when we had a meeting with uh, the, His Excellency, the Vice President of the Republic, of which the Honorable Deputy Minister of Health, Honorable Tina Mensa, in uh, her presence, she said, Trainee allowance is independent of bonding. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the 2016 certificate batch who were recently posted, mm -hmm. we went to college with them in 2014. But because they are undertaking the two years program, yeah. they completed in 2016. And they are currently working without bond. Wow. So bonding shouldn't be something that should stop government from what? Okay. Employing us. So okay. far as we have a group employed without bond, it's the same way we are also supposed All to right. enjoy. And we'll try and speak to authorities definitely to find some answers, especially in relation to the issues they have raised on the show today. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining me. And they are speaking on behalf of all unemployed nurses and also the coalition of uh, rotation nurses and midwives.